Hey friends, I hope you're having a great day. We're gonna do a Q&A video today. Uh, so I've printed out the questions you submitted over the month and uh, I'm gonna try not to make a ton of noise with this, but no promises. But before we get into your questions, let's go ahead and take a look at the part of the poll where you got to answer my questions and some of those results. So the first question was, which hike would you most like to see next? And I really was not expecting these responses. So Linville Gorge and Black Mountain Crest tied with the most votes. And there were some votes for the Foothills Trail and none for the Bartram, nothing. But so what I really was not expecting was anyone to vote on the Foothills Trail. I figured, well, since I've already done that, you know, probably no one would want to see me do it again. I would go the opposite direction and probably take Nora, but it was actually kind of encouraging that if I were to get back out there, uh, probably with a canine companion, there's some people who would want to see it. The other thing was Black Mountain Crest. I wasn't really sure people would vote on. The Black Mountain Crest, if you're not sure what it is, it's a 12 and a half mile trail that is the really hard way to get up to Mount Mitchell. Yes, you can drive to it and, uh, you know, park your car in the parking lot and walk a couple hundred feet. You can also take the five mile Mount Mitchell Trail, or you can take the Black Mountain Crest, which goes over, I think it's like five or six major peaks just to get to Mount Mitchell uh, as the final peak or destination. And this is one that looks like a ton of fun, like there's ropes and some technical stuff to it. I have been trying so hard to execute this trip for over a month, but I've had to cancel it three times now. The first was for some personal stuff that came up, but then the second time, the days I had scheduled my hike, my shuttle was about to be out there, the tropical storm blew through. And so I had to cancel uh, because of just safety concerns with that and uh, waited a little bit and rescheduled, but the damage was so bad to the trails in the area and the flooding, bunch of campgrounds and even the Blue Ridge Parkway closed. And so I had to cancel that a third time. And believe me, I made so many calls to ranger stations and um, even they didn't have a full understanding of just like how bad the damage was yet. They were still kind of taking care of the major things on the parkway and hadn't sent anybody to go check out, you know, safety as far as the trails. So, I'm just gonna have to be patient and as soon as I can get you know some information from those ranger stations what the full extent of the damage is and if the trails were okay to hike then once there's the clear patch of weather head on out there and take it on but so another thing is I know no one voted for the Bartram but I've been trying to coordinate this one for months now yes literally months uh, I'm telling you finding a shuttle is impossible. I have called and emailed every outfitter in the guidebook and even like their recommendations to other outfitters and people who shuttle and everyone has said no they don't go out that way or there's a permitting issue or something that is keeping them from being able to shuttle along the Bartram and when I do find someone uh, having a dog complicates things like they don't shuttle dogs or there's some kind of scheduling conflict. So uh, I feel like I'm just back to square one. Every time I think I have a lead, something kind of happens. And uh, so your prayers would be very much appreciated that either you know I get in contact with the right people that can help make this happen, or if this is something I need to let go or postpone even longer, that that will be made clear to me. But yeah, so prayers very much appreciated. But enough of that, let's get into the second part of the poll, which was, should I bring a dog on my next through hike? And overwhelmingly, it was yes, absolutely dogs love adventure. Couple votes for no, leave them home, and then some folks that said, uh, depends which dog, which I ask myself every time I'm about to go on a trip is which dog, because they have totally different personalities, both at home and when they're on the trail, they act way different from each other and so the details of the trip kind of determine you know which dog or which personality is going to come along with me each time 
But so, yes, I do have intentions to bring the dogs on some future trips. That will be pretty exciting. But now let's get into your questions. So the first questions all have to do with future hiking plans. This first one is any plans to hike the Smokies? Not immediately. So I've only been to Great Smoky Mountain National Park like one time and we did part of the Mount Leconte Trail. It would be super fun to do that whole experience where you stay at the lodge or the cabins uh, at the end of that trail. But um, because of the really tight restrictions on where to camp and permitting and all of that, I like my trips to be a little more flexible as far as like where I camp and, you know, where I go. And some people love having just that really um, structured regulation in place. There's nothing wrong with that. Some people love that peace of mind, knowing exactly where they're going to camp and, you know, if there's going to be cables and water sources. Some people love that. But like I said, that's not really something I enjoy. I much prefer having like flexibility in the plan. But so another thing that's a little bit of a deal breaker for me is the no dogs rules. And um, I know they can't go on every single trip, but they're part of the pack. And so now when I go on a backpacking trip or a hike, it feels like something's kind of missing if they're not along for it. And uh, yeah, so I have wanted to hike the Benton Mackay Trail. That's something that I'd like to do in the next couple years, but maybe that will be my Smoky Mountains experience because I do know over 90 miles of the trail runs through there. So we'll see, maybe it's not completely off the table, but just not in the near future for me. Okay, our next question is, have you considered exploring Panther Town Valley? So, all trails suggested some trails in Panther Town not that long ago, and I thought that's kind of interesting. I bookmarked it, but then forgot about it. Well, as soon as I read this question, I was like, why is that name so familiar? So then I went back, I did a little bit of research, saw trip reports, pictures, videos, and this is an area that is close to where I usually backpack, but I didn't know it was there. So like this little hidden treasure right under my nose. And that afternoon, I wasted no time in placing my order for Bert's guide slash um, trail map. And now I definitely have plans to hike this area. I'm super excited to see all of the opportunities that are there for backpacking, day hiking. And it seems like a pretty dog friendly area. A lot of the trip reports and pictures I saw people took their dogs. So that is a, a definite plus. Prior to uh, getting this question, I didn't have plans to hike or explore Panther Town. But now thanks to you, I totally do. But I really love that when you hear about a trail system or a possible trip through just word of mouth and people sharing, you know, the places that they like to go. So uh, once again, thank you so much for that question slash recommendation. I now have plans to go explore this really cool area. Next question is one I actually got twice and I do get asked a whole lot by friends and family. And I'll read you both questions, but the first is plans to through hike the AT. And on a similar topic, do you have plans or ambitions to hike really long trails like the AT PCT or anything longer than 150 miles. I could talk about this all day, but for everybody's sanity, I will cut it down to a concise answer and just say no. I have no ambition, no desire to hike the Appalachian Trail or the Pacific Crest Trail. There are parts of the Appalachian Trail I would love to see. I would love to do a couple days backpacking Grayson Highlands. I would love to do that 100 mile section in Shenandoah National Park. There's tons of pieces of the Appalachian Trail I think would be fun to do as a weekend or week long trip, but I have absolutely no desire to through hike it uh, for a lot of reasons. Um, it's a very crowded trail. Just the number of people who hike it every year, it just goes up exponentially. And I know a very small fraction of people who start actually finish the through hike but 
just those crowds and it being such a popular trail, I don't think I would have very much fun. That's just not my scene. I love solitude. I like meeting that handful of people when I go on a trip, but that's about it. It's not, you know, sharing the trail with hundreds of people. Also, I wouldn't want to leave home for that long. That's a really long time, be it four months, six months, however long it takes you to do the hike. And I wouldn't enjoy that very much either. For me, the fear of missing out on what's going on at home would be way worse than the fear of missing out on a chance to hike the AT or something like that. Like the other day, we got our first egg from our chickens and we also had to eat our first rooster. But just little moments like that are way more valuable to me than, you know, an experience on a hike. So unless my husband and my dogs packed up in a van and followed me southbound, like the whole way, that is the only way I can see myself through hiking a long trail like that. And there's no way that is ever going to happen. Now, as for longer trails, I did just mention the Benton Mackay Trail, and that's about 300 miles. That's a trail that I could see myself doing, really enjoying. And uh, yeah, so things that are in the couple hundred range, yes, in the next couple years, I sure would like to take on. I'm totally satisfied with just uh, hiking shorter trails or doing you know, little weekend or week long trips in my little neck of the woods. That's fine with me. Uh, I don't feel like I'm missing out or limiting myself in any way by just being happy doing what I'm already doing. Our next question has to do with hygiene on the trail and I love this one. So how do you handle skincare slash minimalist makeup on a multi-day backpacking trip? First of all, I don't wear makeup. Literally, the only makeup I wear is the liquid eyeliner. That is it. No foundations, powder, BB cream, just I used to use all that stuff and it was contributing more to my skin problems than anything else and so stopped using all of that. And I've got an at-home skincare routine, just one of those like three-step kits you can get at any store in like the skincare aisle. And then on the trail, I make sure to wash my face twice a day. So first thing in the morning and usually after I've gotten settled into camp and made dinner, I boil a little extra water with breakfast and dinner and then use that leftover warm water to wash my face in the pot. And I've got a tiny little piece of natural soap. It's like a, a chunk I've cut off of a bigger bar and obviously dump the gray water away from a water source. But yeah, so I just wash my face um, with warm water at camp because, you know, hiking is dirty. You're covered in sunscreen and bug spray and sweat and literal dirt. So for me, it's been really helpful to make sure I don't get lazy and wash my face twice a day when I'm out. And then when I finally get home from a trip, whether it's a weekend or, you know, longer, I have noticed my skin is a lot clearer. There's not as much of a problem with breakout and uh, irritation. So that's how I handle it. I don't wear makeup. Like I said, literally just the waterproof eyeliner and uh, wash my face. That's the most important thing. Our next question is, can you do more spotlighting of camp spots that you stay at to help others who are considering the same trail? So I kind of want a better definition or more explanation as to what spotlighting campsites means before I make a promise I can't keep. But if you mean share more of the itinerary details, then sure. I do want to start doing a trip video that is more like a report separate from the entertaining storytelling part of uh, the trip videos that I do. And in that share more of those itinerary details like the route, the camp options, things like that. And I tried to do something like that with the art lobe. I did like a 30 minute video going through all the information I gathered and areas of concern. But at the same time, it's really not my goal to become like a guide channel. I do enjoy focusing more on that like entertaining storytelling part of it. 
but a channel that I really love that does a fantastic job of going into those details as far as like the camp spots, the roots, is Lane's World. So if you haven't checked out his channel, definitely do. He does such a great job with like that attention to detail. So I'll link his channel in the description. Last thing I'll say on this topic is I'm also more than happy to talk trail with people. So if you want to pick my brain about the Art Lobe Trail or the Foothills Trail, you know, somewhere I've been, just send me a message. And like I said, I'm more than happy to talk to people about that and just share what I know. So yeah, like don't hesitate to ask. This one was actually submitted as two questions on separate topics, but of course I'm going to answer both. The first was, what's your favorite thing to eat for each meal? Breakfast? I'm tired of oatmeal. I hate oatmeal. It is so freaking hot outside and the last thing I want to eat is hot oatmeal. So this whole summer and into the start of fall, I've been eating granola or Cheerios. It is so easy to make. I just take powdered milk and some water and pack myself a huge bag of Cheerios and then just kind of like scoop out however much I want for a day. And it's no effort whatsoever. The only thing I'm using my fuel for is to make coffee. And sometimes like I'm kind of lazy about that and I just like pour the cold water into the coffee and drink it cold. I know RX Bar and Lara Bar just came out with their own breakfast cereal, but it's pretty much like fancy granola. So I've been buying that and taking that out with me and really good. My favorite is the cinnamon apple flavor. As for lunch, uh, peanut butter and jelly never gets old to me. I used to do tuna salad, chicken salad, but that got real old real quick. Peanut butter and jelly I never get tired of, and I do kind of a more health conscious version of it. Like I make sure it's just peanuts in the peanut butter, no extra salt, sugar, oil. And then I'll do like the sugar-free um, single serve packets of jelly and like some whole wheat pita bread. And that's another easy one that I can pack sort of in bulk and eat like every day if I'm out for, you know, three or more days. So that's another simple, low effort, uh, no cooking option I really like, especially if I'm taking a shorter lunch break. Just kind of throw that together and I can even walk and eat it. And lastly, dinner. So I mentioned trying to be a little more health conscious. Uh, we all know Mountain House is full of like salty, sugary, mystery ingredient stuff. And so for the longest time, I was making my own backpacking dinners and meals, but it was so time consuming to uh, package everything and some ingredients needed to be packed separately. So on top of that, I was coming home with way more trash. And also a lot of the meals weren't as simple as like a freeze dried one where you just add water. At first it was great. And then just over time realizing kind of the pitfalls with it. So all of that to say, I've been trying a few of the different uh, freeze-dried and dehydrated meals on the market and I found one recently that I really love by Peak Refuel. I love the pork and rice. That is so good. I had that for the first time on a trip recently and um, you know how sometimes when you rehydrate a meal there's like some off consistency or you know it may even be kind of crunchy some things don't rehydrate all the way. There was none of that problem with this. Everything was just perfect. You probably could have put it in a pot at home and served it to me and said like, this is a meal that's been made fresh and I would believe you. It was just really, really good. And uh, so good in fact that on my way home from the trip, I stopped at the uh, gear store and bought like four more packages of it. So that is my recommendation. I really like the pork and rice from Peak Refuel. I bought a couple more of their meals, like their pasta marinara, that I'm looking forward to trying. Uh, this second question submitted was, what's a new gear item you're loving the most right now? I am so glad you asked. So I just bought, th this is such like a luxury gear item, but it's the Gigapump 2.0 and it inflates your sleeping pad for you, but it's this tiny little pump that just takes up no space at all. I toss it in my technology bag. It also functions as a flashlight, which is pretty cool. 
and has a hook so I can hang it on the inside of my tent. A lot of the times if I've been hiking, you know, 10, 15 miles in a day, I mean, even if it's been like five miles, sometimes I don't feel like blowing up the sleeping pad. Uh, I get lightheaded and yes, they make the pump sack that you're supposed to gather air in and then, you know, like roll it to inflate the pad. But I always feel like I can't figure out how to do it correctly and it's so much more of a hassle. I just get frustrated. I don't even want to mess with it. But so I got this little tiny pump that, you know, I just let it do its thing and then I can focus on, you know, more important or other camp chores that need to get done. All right, our last question is, what other fitness activities and diets do you do to stay in shape for hiking? As far as diets, I just kind of watch what I eat pretty closely. I try not to eat processed food and I don't drink any soda or eat candy bars. Just try to eat a lot of salads and if we can cook at home, we do. And uh, you know, if I go out to a restaurant, get something that's like healthier salad, whatever, like I said. And uh, yeah, and then when I'm on the trail, try to eat, you know, healthier snacks. I know sometimes it can't be avoided. Like there's gonna be extra salt, sugar, whatever in your dehydrated meals and stuff. So looking at ingredient labels also and picking things that have the least amount of additives. So that's pretty much what I do. Just watch what I eat and try to make uh, informed decisions on what I'm buying. As for physical activities, um, a lot of the stuff we do at home is pretty active with, I mean, our chickens carrying big feed bags and their watering buckets and stuff. Also a little bit of gardening, but please don't try and talk to me about gardening. I have no idea what I'm actually doing. I couldn't possibly hold an intelligent conversation with you about it. But so a lot of like shoveling dirt and pushing the yard cart from place to place, just physical activities like that around the house and around the yard. And then on top of that, I try to do like 30 minutes a day of like a workout video, just on YouTube, look up a workout video and then use like dumbbells or some kind of weights to add a little bit of extra challenge to it. And then when it is not Satan degrees outside, I do like to go to the local trails and parks and go running. Not good at that by any means, but I do enjoy it. And Nora loves to run, so having a four-legged friend that also enjoys that activity is a pretty big motivator to get outside and just add extra activity into the day. So I hope that answers the question, but that wraps up our Q&A video today. Thank you so much to everyone who submitted their questions and responded to the poll. I'm currently working on another poll for this month, and I'm thinking it'll have something to do with your stories or your backpacking experiences because uh, you guys hear a lot about mine but I sure would love to hear a whole lot more about yours so I think I'm gonna make our next poll where you share some of your stories and of course you can choose to add a trail name or stay anonymous um, but yeah link to that will be in the description and we'll you know do a video on it at the end of next month but I hope you have a great rest of your day and I can't wait to see you again next time. Tracing my footsteps through the wind. Back to a place where